Uh, me again. Um, apparently the director, we are in Hollywood after all, has informed me that we are getting close to the end of our program. Um, well, I'm the only woman that's talking, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the executive producer, obviously. Not really. Not really, but... Uh, how much time have I got? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Hey, ben, a funny, funny man. You know, I have kind of a soft spot for comedians. <laughs> I know, but no. Um, oh, maybe a couple. <laughs> Are they here? <laughs> Well, in 1963, I met Dave Madden because we were both booked into Marshall Edson's Ye Little Club in Beverly Hills. Well, my agent called me and said, you know, I'm sending some studio execs out to see you. They're doing a new project and they want to see you perform. Well, as studio execs always are, they were late, I was through, and David came on, and they loved him. And, and they, they made him the counselor in Camp Runamuck. So that was the start of his television career. I then went out to Ben Blues and nightclub, and then, you know, I, the rest is just nothing. Okay, uh, the next time, Still, I think in the 60s, maybe early 70s, uh, I was booked with David on the Playboy circuit. And we were, uh, it seemed like we were always booked together, David and I, oh, well, and Harry Blackstone Jr., sometimes. I mean, yeah, well. And uh, 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 Harry would open for me, and I would open for Dave, and we went back and forth, and then we were the threesome, you know? <laughs> then one time, Harry said, or maybe he'd like to make it a twosome. Mm -hmm. So I had to talk it over with Dave, and I said, Dave, what do you think? And he said, Allison, please, stay away from Harry Blackstone. He's a magician. He'll turn you into a motel. <laughs> it's true, but he didn't. Okay. <clears throat> He married an ice skater who would be his, uh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> anyway, in 19, um, oh, oh, I wanted to say first, it's just short, but my daughter adored Dave Madden. Uh, when she would come to visit us and we were on the road, uh, he would play games with her and he would um, uh, tell her stories and, uh, you know, and the, Selena and, and uh, your brother. I mean, I'm Michael. sorry. Yeah, Michael. I know Michael, but I like to say your brother. Critics <laughs> <laughs> here. Okay. God, please. Anyway, um, he must have been just a wonderful father because he really had a way with kids. And you know, when um, when my daughter got to be a teenager and we all lived in the valley, uh, he let her bring all of her girlfriends to the Partridge set. I mean, he was her guy. <laughs> now, in 1978, I gave a funeral for my career. <laughs> well, it, it, it had uh, it, it died, and I didn't want it to smell. <laughs> so, <laughs> Steve Franken was the uh, coroner, and uh, Alan Oppenheimer was the rabbi. And David officiated in full monk's garb. <laughs> now, you often heard that if uh, Frank Sinatra sang the phone book, <laughs> it would be wonderful. Well, Dave Madden could read anything, and it would be funny. For his spiel, he just read my biog. <laughs> I never realized my career and my life was that funny. <laughs> hmm. Anyway. So, at Ridgely's funeral, um, not funeral, memorial service, which was just a hoot. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, David hollered out, hey, Allie, we did this, remember, when you were still alive? <laughs> well, now, don't laugh, but that's the only thing that's wrong with this wonderful gathering, is that Dave, damn it, isn't here to enjoy it. And you know, he would. And maybe he is. Uh, 
in uh, 1980, I moved to New York. And uh, I came back to Los Angeles probably every month. <laughs> How do you quit Los Angeles? <laughs> well, it was then that David welcomed me into the wonderful round table a comedy club here in the, in the uh, Magic Castle. Well, and every time I would come back, the invitation was still open. I will tell you, it tears me up, but boy, that probably was the, the most wonderful thing that ever happened in my life. Boy, did we have laughs. Oh, God. It was just uh, wonderful. Anyway, um, knowing that at 45, if you're a woman and in this business, your career is kind of on the on the downspout, I went to Florida and I started a children's theater. Uh, Johnny Regis, I don't know if you know him, but Johnny came up from Miami to Cocoa Beach where I was to help me with some of the lighting. And he said, you know, Dave Madden just came back to, to, to Florida. I said, you're kidding. I got on the phone. Oh my God. He said, come down, come on down. Well, once, twice. I tried three times. I got lost every time. I tell you, I, 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 could, I, I never saw him. And then we had two devastating hurricanes. And um, I what, came back to, to New York, and I, I just kind of lost touch. Uh, and then I, I had to read about this in the trays. Uh, what can I say? This is just such a shocker. Now, I, I, this has gone on longer than my career. <laughs> <laughs> and Alan Oppenheimer told me if I talked more than three minutes, he was taking out his hearing aids. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just close the way I started. Dave Madden, a funny, funny man, but moreover, a wonderful, wonderful friend. Yes. Sail on, dear friend. Now, heck is going to come along any minute now. <laughs> just save me a booking. <laughs> I'll be here trying to wait out Betty White. <laughs>